Actually, I was just uh, tweeting earlier that uh, I feel a little bit bad about uh, giving just an old, boring uh, technical talk. But uh, a friend uh, said, uh, yeah, you've been picked for diversity. <laughs> I like that. So uh, you have to listen to one uh, token, boring, white male talk today. Anyway, um, so calling native code from Ruby, why, won't you, uh, why would you even want to do that? Um, so if you want to use some native uh, library or system functionality, you might have to call into C code. But we don't really want to use a C extension for this, because nobody got time to deal with users' compiler problems. So one thing uh, we have as part of the CocoaPods project is a gem called XcodeProj, which uh, deals with Xcode, which is the um, IDE for developing iOS and Mac apps. And um, we need to deal with this um, to integrate dependencies, which is what CocoaPods does. And it used to include a C extension for uh, quite some time. And there were so many issues with that. For example, um, in some versions of OS X, uh, building C extension was actually completely broken and uh, added weird compiler arguments. Um, there's the problem of um, it is not very transparent if um, um, a C extension fails to build. You sometimes just see fail to build gem native extension, and then you have to look at some log file or something. And many users, of course, are not really familiar with, um, especially for our users, they're not, sometimes not even familiar with Ruby, and even less with C extensions, so it's really hard for them to even know what happens. And you can also have things like this, so you don't really know what happens. And it's not only us that have, uh, have problems with C extensions. If you look at a really popular gem, uh, Nakugiri, and you look at their issues uh, and search for compile, you see that there are over 200 issues relating to compiling. It's a C extension, and it's not because they are doing a sloppy job, just that it's really hard to get stuff to compile on random users' computers, basically. But there's a solution, which is called Fiddle. Uh, Fiddle exists in uh, Ruby since 1.9x, um, but really you want uh, 2x because there are some neatly little details which don't work well on 1.9x, but that shouldn't be a problem so much. It was a problem for us in the beginning because OS X shipped with um, 1.87 actually for a long time, but now um, we don't have that problem anymore. And it's a fun foreign function interface for calling C from Ruby. It uses uh, DLopen and DLSim, which are C APIs for dealing with um, dynamic shared libraries. And it can also be used to call Objective-C, which I will be showing later. This is how it looks like in a very uh, simple way. So you require the fiddle jam, and you can uh, DLopen a shared library that is existing on the system or that the users install via some other way. And then you have a function object. And when you instantiate it, you give it um, the symbol you want to load, which is the function, the C function you want to ha expose. Uh, you give it the parameter types, which is an array of um, constants, basically. I will show them uh, in, on the next slide. And the return type. And what you get back is a function object, and that you can simply call. You give it the parameters the function needs, and you get a result. Um, so Fiddle has a couple of uh, constants for all the different types um, in C, for void, for integer, char, for all the floating point types, stuff like this, also for pointers, which is the type void p, void pointer. <clears throat> and it's also possible if you want to use something from the standard C library, which isn't exposed via um, the Ruby standard library, you can also just uh, create a, basically an empty handle with fiddle handle new, and you can reference um, the, your own binary, which includes, of course, the C library. And let's uh, look a bit at how we actually used it inside the Xcode Proj gem. The first part, um, so basically we had two steps in our process of integrating it. The first uh, thing we wanted to do is use uh, Core Foundation, which is basically on Mac OS X. It's the lowest level of um, 
functionality that is macOS specific, you could see, say. Under that is a C library, which is usually um, like a POSIX thing, so it's portable. But the core foundation provides um, Mac specific stuff. Uh, among them, reading and writing P lists. That is what we needed. So, property lists, they're used for many um, tools that Apple writes, among them Xcode. And so, we needed to call into Core Foundation to deal with P lists. And as we saw earlier, you need like four lines of code or so to call one function. And also, you have this function object, which is a little bit different from a regular function. So what we wanted to do is to have a way to expose all the functions we needed as Ruby functions without writing too much code. So for that, we created this um, little function here. And the first thing we do is, uh, so we um, have a cache, basically, of functions, which includes the symbol name. And that um, allows us to basically save the function object instances. So not every time we call a function, we have to create all the things. And the next thing, which is down here, is we define actually dynamically a method which creates this function object with um, the symbol we need, with the parameter types and the return type, as we saw earlier. And we also save that function as an instant variable, which is basically our cache. And then finally, we have... Um, we call that function and return this. So this is our um, dynamic function. Basically, this part is the dynamic function we create. And it returns, um, of course, the result of the function call. And we have one final nitty-gritty detail of our core foundation, which is you have to do manual memory management. And um, there is, though, a way to do kind of automatic man management, which is called auto-release. And the convention is if a function is called create something. So that's why we have up here, the, we look for the create in the, in the name of the function. Um, if, it, if it's in the function, we have to call this auto release. That uh, allows us to, if we have created an object, it gets released automatically. So using that um, function, we created, um, so what we needed is also the path to the, to the library that's up here. Um, here we do the deal open of it. And then we basically have uh, another convenience function which just takes this and calls the external image function we just saw. And what that allows us to do is we can just very simply um, call, uh, create these um, function functions um, with just one call to this extern method, the name of the function, the parameter types, and the return type. And then we can just call this uh, here as a normal, like a normal Ruby function. So we don't have to care anymore if it is a function that comes from C or not. And that allows us to really keep the usage of fiddle um, contained in one module, and the rest of the code base doesn't care and with that, um, we can, for example, do this, which is um, converting a string, a CF string to a Ruby string. So that's something you have to do a lot. When you call into C libraries, you have to convert Ruby types to the C types, because, for example, a Ruby array is not a C array. A Ruby string is not the CF string. So um, you really have to um, actually deal with these details of what, um, how to convert types. And especially for us, it was especially true because we needed to deal with this uh, core foundation library. So the details of the function don't matter that much. It just uh, shows that we can just call uh, things like the CF data get byte pointer um, as a, like a regular Ruby function. We don't have to care anymore that it's a C function, actually. So the next step we needed to uh, take, or we wanted to take, so it used to be that we just wrote this plist using core foundation. Unfortunately, this is not actually 100% the format that Xcode writes. So our next step was actually calling into functionality, like private functionality of Xcode, to write it um, exactly as we wanted. And um, for this, we actually had to call Objective-C. 
And we can also do this with Fiddle, because Objective-C is um, still having C calling conventions. And that means um, it is, in the end, calling C functions. And most uh, importantly, there's one C function, which is called Objective-C message send, which basically happens every time you make a method call in Objective-C. So we, again, wanted to wrap this a bit. So we created this Objective-C message send function, which takes, again, arguments and return type. And basically, the only difference between the calling just a regular function and a method, an Objective-C method, is it needs two additional parameters, two pointers. Um, the first pointer is the object. And the second pointer is called a selector, which is more or less just the name of the method we want to call. So by creating this um, Objective-C message send function, we could actually create Ruby classes, um, which are wrappers around an Objective-C class. They take in their initializer, they get the object, which we obtain from somewhere else. And then we can call methods on them. For example, we have this plist description utf add data function, uh, method, rather. Um, we have the selector, which, as you see, is basically just a string. We can call a function called response to selector, which uh, tells us if this selector is implemented on the object. It's just a safety measure to make sure. Um, so we can, in, in through the initializer, we can pass anything. So we have to make sure that it actually implements this method. Otherwise, we get runtime crashes, which is another nice property, of course, of calling into C. You can get crashes. Um, then we call this Objective-C message send, which gives us back a function object, and that we can just regularly call by giving it the object. And via this, we get from the string the selector object, which is just another kind of string. And this allowed us to call um, Objective-C from, uh, from Ruby without uh, having a C extension, which was our goal. And to recap, so C extensions have a real bad, bad UX. Um, as you saw, many projects struggle with it. We struggle with it, uh, even though we only support one platform. So um, CocoaPods only runs on OS X. So it was even more, um, it was even easier for us. It's much more difficult if you actually have a project that runs on multiple platforms. And Fiddle provides a way to use native code dynamically which limits all the compilation hassle. And as you saw, it's not that, it's not that difficult. I mean, if you uh, have uh, wanted to write C instead, um, it's not that much different. And we can all even call Objective-C if we want. Thanks. Um, why do you think it's used so little, or? Why it is so unknown, the fiddle? <clears throat> I'm, oh, why is so useful? Sorry, I, I didn't get it uh, acoustically. Um, well, the, the thing is, as you saw, if you don't, it, it creates some boilerplate. Um, but really, I don't know. I guess it's used so little because people don't know about it so much. Um, we sure didn't know about it before we used it. <laughs> and yeah, that's uh, part of the reason why I gave this talk, so people know about it. And I think um, the other problem is uh, sometimes C extensions are used for performance reasons. So you implement something in C so it's faster. And with that, Fiddle can't help, right? The goal, the goal of the users of Fiddle is really if you need to call an existing library. Because if you just implement your stuff in Ruby, it, it's probably even more slower. Because as you saw, you have to do this type conversions, even more than when you would just uh, write a C extension. And then you have just a type conversion once. With um, using Fiddle, it can happen even more. So for if you have a C extension for performance reasons, it's not a good idea to use Fiddle. Then you still need the C extension. Another question. No more? Then one more round of applause. <laughs>